the word America, but it just means success. Yeah. 07, 08, yeah. 09. That was a tough time, man. Yeah. Bro, and especially in financial services. Yeah. Dude, every time we turn on the news, man, it was like yeah. the world was ending. Yeah. I always relate subprime mortgages from Wall Street as like crack cocaine hitting Harlem. It just yeah. came in, people got addicted to it, and yeah. it just devastated the economy. Money was so easy. There's something entrepreneurs mm -hmm. gain through some struggle gives success value. So I value my success now. In this amazing post-pandemic environment that we're in, we're all connected on social. I think more and more people are finding that a just a traditional college degree is not gonna cut it. People are losing trust mm -hmm. towards the traditional college degree and they're understanding that entrepreneurship and gaining information through the connectivity of social media. Yeah. You gotta evolve, man, like every industry, dude. Consistency is character, dude. You are not allowed to make thousands, if not millions of dollars, unless you go through a downturn. This is your rite of passage because success is given value through struggle. 84% do not trust company brands. Really? They trust personal brands. Individuals? Yes. Wow. If yes. you were not at your company, yeah. would you still follow them on social? Wow. People follow you no matter where yeah. you go. Yeah. Because they follow personal brands. They're gonna trust you, bro. Exactly. You. You are a walking LLC. Leadership is very important in tough times, man. I'm a very big believer that motivation without education is yeah. just discouragement. This is what the industry needs right now. Yeah. And I, I've been appointed to do it. So joining me in the studio today is a throwback. This is a massive throwback for me. A guy that knew me when I was coming up in the insurance business and uh, gave me grace to allow me to use his mortgage office to run some of my insurance seminars and workshops. But joining me in the studio today is Amir Syed from Shy Town, now in my jammy and coaching. Dale. <laughs> and coaching some of the uh, most leading uh, mortgage Malone professionals in the industry today. So, um, Amir, I'm just glad you're here in the, in the office. Then we can circle back up again. I mean, we got together what, last year. We, we I went to do a workshop in Little Rock, Arkansas, and you flew out from Chicago to meet me there. So I just mm -hmm. appreciate our friendship over the years. You know what, man? This we were just talking before we got on. This is a testimony. We put a yeah. throwback picture of you and I of the journey we've been on, man. And <laughs> like, I just feel so grateful, bro. Like I've been really focusing on being in the moment mm -hmm. um, and really understanding the blessings the people God has brought in my life and just to see us yeah. grinding it out 20 <laughs> years ago and now you're in Dallas and I'm in my Amir, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's throw this on the, let's show my laptop here real quick. Let's throw this picture up on the screen. Look at that, man. Oh my God. Hey, Will Smith, Martin Lawrence right there, baby. Bad voice. <laughs> what, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? <laughs> what you gonna do <laughs> when they come, come for you? That's right. That's right. We talked to the mortgage rates. We talked to the mortgage rates. What yes. you gonna do when the mortgage rates come for you, man? Oh my God. But talk to us about this mm. picture real quick. This is a throwback. Uh, we're in front right. of, this is your building. Yeah, that was, um, I dropped out of uh, college. I barely made it through high school. And um, I got into the mortgage business um, and I started telemarketing. That was my first job. Um, and the, the way I got in is a really, really fun story, which, you know, if we have time, I can, I can tell. But, you know, I was 25 or 26 in that picture. It was right around 2007, 2008. So, if, you know, people remember yeah. that was a great recession of the world, right? Yeah. So yeah. it all started from the yeah. subprime mortgage crash. So I'm like kind of the culprit, if you say, right, yeah. which we weren't. But yeah. everything started in that moment. So yeah. I was a young mortgage broker. Enter a business owner entering the great recession. recession. So we were like in the eye of the hurricane, right? And um, you and I had met, and I, yeah. your energy is just obviously probably the most magnetic, energetic people I've, <laughs> I've met, you know? And we just kind of flocked together, and you were doing your thing with uh, financial services, and we were just a really good um, kind of um, partnership, you know? Yeah, we were yeah. all, we were helping clients, you know, get educated and you were doing a lot of seminars at the shop and um, that was my shop, man. I had a lot of guys and gals hustling with me and we ran right into that storm and we took that picture outside. Yeah. I named it American Street Mortgage Company um, just because, you know, I immigrated here from Iran, came here with nothing, with my mom and dad. Um, and the word America for us, okay, to get real mm, specific. Come on. It just, dude, it just means success, Yeah. right? Like yeah. literally, like it's like yeah. this brand, like America, you know, and my, um, Dad's first job was at Main Street. He was a shoe salesman making three seventy-five an hour. Think about that. Back in the mid '80s, just fighting for hours with yeah. high school kids, right? My mom couldn't get a job at McDonald's, 
So that that I still have that sign, you know, and yeah. um, I want to get a big like man cave one day, like yeah. with my cars and everything, and get a sign person to put that sign up again, you know, just to honor it. But I named it American Street yeah. to honor America and to honor my dad from Main Street. So that picture of us in front, yeah, um, is a really important picture to me because yeah. it resum- it re- yeah. reflects friendship, you yeah. know, it it, re- it it resembles just entrepreneurship. It's Chicago, which is very near and dear to me. Um, and a time that was really um, difficult, yeah. you know, through the Great yeah. Recession. So, you know, a picture yeah. says a thousand words, as they say. <laughs> that says a million words, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, by the way, uh, let's talk about the fashion sense here real quick. This <laughs> 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 is still baggy suits. Our oh suits my are still God, still baggy. Man. Dude, dude, uh, dude, dude. This is before I can even, uh, uh, fun fact, man, I, I still couldn't afford Jordans. I didn't have Jordans because I wear Jordans with my suits now. That's right. right. I see you, yeah. So I look at that picture. I still could. I was 42 years old, bro. And you were 42 old, in that picture? Uh, no, no. Um, how old was I in this picture? So, so 13 years ago. So 36? 36. 35? 35, 36? Bro. Yeah, I still, couldn't, I still couldn't afford Jordans at mid, my mid-30s. That was a tough time, man. Yeah, it was. Like, it was very difficult. Anyone that lived in that time, like 07, 08, yeah. 09? Yeah. Bro, and especially in financial services. Yeah. Dude, every time we turn on the news, man, it was like yeah. the world was ending. Yeah. Bro, I would like get yeah. in that office and. It's like news you don't want to hear. Oh my gosh. Man. <laughs> it was crazy, dude. That was a really, really um, scary time. Because let's but, talk about the timeline. Because yeah. mid 2000s, everybody and mother, I mean, I was, I was going to a jujitsu gym hmm. with my son because we had an after school program there. I'm picking him up and I'm like, all right, well, since he's here, why don't, why don't I train too? And one of the guys, he's, I'm done being a teacher. I got recruited into the mortgage business. The guys were making 20, 30, 40 grand in the mortgage business. And that was the height of. Real estate boom because mm-hmm. the, uh, 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 when I got in in financial services '99, dot com bubble hit a couple years ago. Right, right. Everything dot com just crashed. Right, you know. Right. Because everybody that was like the NFT and the Bitcoin of, of oh of, yeah, of, that's of a one, great point. That's you know? right. Everybody, that's right. It didn't matter if it was fundamentals; they just bought it because it was a dot com. Right. Right. Yeah, you're right. And that crashed. Mm-hmm. And then what picked it back up though was the real estate market. Yeah, 01, You know, yeah. uh, 9-11 happened. You know, yeah. tra- terrible tragedy that affected the economy massively. Drove rates down, mortgage yeah. rates, right. and then st- in just, you know, Wall Street was yeah. like, okay, well, stocks ain't doing it. Yeah, housing, it sure. never goes down. People always pay the mortgage. Always pay the mortgage. <laughs> Home values go up. And dude, I always relate subprime mortgages yeah. from Wall Street as like crack cocaine hitting Harlem, mm-hmm. right? It just yeah. came in. People got addicted to it, and yeah. it just devastated the economy. Because money was so easy. How, uh, the, there's this movie out there called The Big Short. I always recommend everybody to watch this. If you can go my, my screen real quick. Yep, but, I, you know, this is a this is a movie that uh, everybody should watch. Just to kind of give a, a perspective, if people didn't experience it, right. of what 07, 08, 09 looked like. Uh, what, what would you, what's your feedback here? What's your two cents here? If, if you were a, 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 a Roger Ebert mm-hmm. and you'd say, hey, this is my synopsis. Well, it's uh, uh, sure. was it accurate? Was it full of shit? It, it, no, it was actually very. It's a great question, man. It was it was uh, very accurate. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of Hollywood in there, but sure. ultimately, the story is it just shows from the the ivory, the t- top floor yeah. of corporate America down to the street level. And what yeah. that means is you got the Wall Street, yeah. big investment banks that were yeah. you know manufacturing these uh, subprime mortgages. Mm-hmm bringing it all the way down to our account executives that were meeting mortgage brokers yeah. to broker those type of loans you know, yeah. from the originators. So we're like sure. the street guys, right? <laughs> yeah. like, I keep using the drug yeah. dealing example because it was literally what it was. The mortgage corner like, boys. Yes, exactly. They're like, push this product, push my product, push my product. Like, and people were getting high off these mortgage programs. Like, I don't have a job, no income, no asset. Right, like I can take out cash from my equity. Mm-hmm. I can buy seven properties with no. T- so people were just getting high off this. Yeah. And this gentleman saw, right, yeah. in simple terms, that there was a big, yeah. big issue. Doctor, from- Doctor Michael Burry. That's yeah. right. With yeah. MBS backed securities, he goes, these are being packaged and just sent out to the world. Right. It was like taking garbage and dumping it into the oceans. Just yeah. get, get it out, and, get it and out. And investing it. And investing <laughs> it. And he, was, and he just sh- basically shorted it. Yeah. You know, and he was absolutely right. And everything just combusted, man. Yeah. In, in a very simple way. But it does depict that from top floor to the bottom floor. So how did a guy like you, and I, I, I got a follow question to this mm-hmm. too as well. So how did a guy like you who's grinding it out, you know, and, and by the way, for the most part, you were, you were contributing to your community. You're helping create mm-hmm. housing. Mm-hmm. People are getting homes. People are investing in real estate. You were putting together basketball tournaments where yes. Michael Jordan would show up. Street ball classic. Yeah, yeah, classic. That was awesome, man. So you were you were giving back. Yes. And then yes. next thing you know, 
It was, know, the, the whole market shifted away from. Oh my gosh, man, dude! I'll tell you what, that uh, experience in my life, um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So in the moment, it was uh, really just, did I make I w- did I make the right decision? You know, how is this happening? Right? You get you get a lot of doubts as an entrepreneur. Yeah. But after that storm passes, yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think back. I'm like, thank you, yeah. God, for putting me through that because. It always gives me resolve. It gives me humility when I get a little bit prideful, right? Um, it bring me, brought me a lot of strength. Mm-hmm. There's something entrepreneurs mm-hmm. gain through some struggle gives success value. So I value my success now. And I never forget those terrible moments that we went through of things I couldn't control, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, to encapsulate that, that period of time, it focused me, man. Like, dude, we were talking about how I drive, right? You know, I grew up parking cars, so I could, you know, I just lean back. I could drive on my knee, you know? Dude, so you get too comfortable, you know, in good times, you kind of forget to focus, you know? Mm. And, and and it focused me. Both hands on the steering 10 wheel. 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Sit straight. Yeah. Seatbelt, like focus. Moments like that, dude, that's the most powerful superpower. It just gets me to pay attention to things that I wasn't paying, to, paying attention to before. If you had a choice to insert that pain point? Mm-hmm. Would you rather have inserted that pain point in the beginning of your career or or where it was in your career? Man. Where just... Great question, dude. I don't know how I would really get through there with a wife and a kid, right? So wow. I was single, yeah. you know, so I can take a little bit more risk. Yeah. Um, my exposure, um, you know, I can have more exposure, right? Because I didn't have responsibility. Dude, yeah. I was living at home until I was 27. I was living at mom and dad in that picture. You know, like Middle Eastern kids, I don't sure. know. We just we yeah. stay at home, right? Yeah. Like, and I was saving money. Yeah. So I think I look at. By the way, I like that concept. Yeah, I like that concept. Yeah. Bring, keep them home until you're ready to go. Yeah. Conserve your assets, and you mm-hmm. know. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. Quick side note. No, no, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Kids are so quick to like get out. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it was a lot of sacrifice living at home in my 20s, but I saved every dollar. I kept my yeah. expenses low. Yeah. You know, and I bought some big apartment buildings to just. Hedge, yeah. you know, and that build those buildings helped me get through the storm. Nice. So it goes so you have back. Some investments in real estate. Dude, yeah. Yeah. yes, man. Like they always talk about, have multiple streams of income. Well, make the main thing the main thing. Mm-hmm. You got to save. Yeah. Put it somewhere else because yeah. that next pillar can help you and yeah. subsidize your main thing. Yeah. When it's very market um, exposed. Yeah. But dude, I think about my parents, man. Like my dad leaving Iran with my yeah. mom. Yeah. You know, in his late twenties, with a five-year-old, new country, new language, new culture. Yeah, I would have made it just because we find ways to make it. Yeah. But I think, dude, if I, I'm glad I started young without that type of responsibility to get through that storm. Gotcha. You know, when, when you're when you're looking at, um, I mean, you're coaching loan officers now. Yes. I mean, I mean, some of this, by the way, guys, you got to follow Amir's stuff. I mean, you're helping people through some of the worst. I could just tell by the, the by the tone of your written text that you've been through some stuff. Oh man, yeah, thank right? you. Oh, yeah. Right, you, you can tell. You know, no faking the fun. There's bro. no motivational quotes. This is like, yo, dog, been there, done that, and this is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. So, since 2010, though, I mean, America really hasn't had a bad recessionary period until maybe the last couple of years in, in terms of mortgage uh, interest rates. That's right. So if there was a, this large economic expansion. Of things going so well. So a lot of guys in real estate, a lot of guys in mortgages the last 14 years, now they're getting humbled. The reason why I asked you that question is, would you rather have that pain in the beginning or where it's at right now? Because a lot of these guys haven't experienced pain. They've, everything's great. Everything's great. 3%, 3%, 3%, 4%, 5%. Then whammo, we're at what we're, we're at right now with rates. Almost 8.5% now. Almost 8, as of today, October 2023. We're okay. at low eights. Got it. You know? So you're, you're right. I think... Dude, it's been a great run since 2012, right? So we had a great run from 99, <laughs> like, let's say 2001 to 2008. Then we had a great run from 2012 to 2022, right? This is like my favorite book is The Godfather, okay? Yes, and, of great course. book. I read it twice. Like, like, and so they always say there's mafia wars every seven years, you know? And I always just remember that. Like, there's mortgage mafia wars every 10 years, bro. It's just cycles, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But what it does is it truly tests the long term committed loan officer. Yeah. If you're really committed to this, yeah. okay, you're going to get rewarded. Yeah. You follow? And dude, the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage since 1971, what, what do you think it is if you had to guess? Matt? It's a 19, the average rate. Um, mortgage rate. 
Well, see, I kind of know. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, okay. So, so, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> because that was during, that was like 15, 18% back then. Yeah. So, dude, if you take the average of since 1971, we're good. 7.76. So, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we've we're just good. been, yeah. we just, it's been easy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, I just think, dude, with the coaching thing, leadership is very important in tough times, man. You know? Um, and I'm a very big believer that motivation without education is yeah. just discouragement. You cannot motivate people yeah. first. You got to educate yeah. and then let them motivate. And in our coaching program, there's built on accountability. I don't believe that. I think education without accountability is straight disappointment, right? So people want, I don't want the fluff. I don't want the generality. Give me the specificity, yeah. right? What do I need to do and how do I do it? Yeah. That's what people are looking for. So you educate them. Mm -hmm. So when they go into this market, yeah. they're like, okay, this is a battle-tested yeah. general. He's been through this, and he's giving me the nuts and bolts, how I got to move every single day. Yeah. And he's giving me vision, sure. giving me hope. Right. This is what the industry needs right now. Yeah. And I, I've been appointed to do it. I want to take a look at my screen real quick because this is pretty interesting. I, I took the screenshot in 08. Okay? I took the screenshot in 08. Most say it's difficult in the middle, in terms of being in the middle class. Most members of the middle class say that they're worse off than they were five years ago, which was 2000, if we, based on this article, which is 2003. So 53% of Americans define themselves as the middle class. Now, the reason why I bring this up, mm. has this changed much? No. <laughs> it's very sad. <laughs> it's still the same shit. The same shit. I mean, there's a oh, wait in the middle of the Great Recession. So, you know, you had a choice, though. Immigrant family from Iran, mm -hmm. you, you come over here. Are we in a place right now in America where, hey, bro, listen, this problem has been around 14, 15, 20 years. The problem has been around a lot longer than, than, than in the 90s and in the 80s. Mm -hmm. You got a choice. Mm -hmm. You got a choice today to either be rich mm -hmm. or be broke because in the middle, it's mm -hmm. still difficult. Dude, what a great um, graphic there. You know, home values have gone up just exponentially. Cost of everything has gone up exponentially, but the average median income has barely moved. Exactly. Yeah. And so what I think in this amazing post-pandemic environment that we're in, where we're all connected on social, I think more and more people are finding that a, just a traditional college degree. Mm -hmm. we'll go, we'll go back. Mm -hmm. A traditional college degree is just not going gonna, 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 gonna to cut it. People are losing trust mm -hmm. towards the traditional college degree. And they're mm -hmm. understanding that entrepreneurship and gaining information through the connectivity of social media, yeah. you know, is, yeah. um, is, is we're in a new wave, dude. Yeah. You know, that... Going to college, getting a job yeah. is not going to allow one to keep up. Yeah. You know, and middle class is starting to realize that, especially the younger generation. Like 08, I mean, I mean, we got pictures from on Facebook from 08, but social media has accelerated significantly since 08. Especially through the pandemic. Right. Everyone was at home. Right. Like, they're on, on their phones. I mean, look at Renee. I mean, I, you know, you introduced me to Renee Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. He's been in business for 30 years. The only thing I respect about him is that he's obviously continued to grow and evolve. How's a guy in his 50s have a million people following on Instagram? Mo is smile, baby. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. And we got we to gotta, we gotta bring Mo in. Right? <laughs> we do, yeah. The things that he's, that he's talking about. Mm. And so, but kudos to Mo being able to teach a guy like him to grow. Because a lot of guys said, well, this is the way I've been doing it for the last 20, 30 years. Without thinking that I have to put myself out there. Well, dude, the three biggest barriers to growth are fear, entitlement, perfection. Mm -hmm. So entitlement is what stops a lot of people at Renee's tenure. You follow me? Ten, a tenure. <laughs> yeah, tenure, right? But even look at everything. Look at um, Jordan got the, got the fadeaway. Uh -huh. Right now, a lot of loan officers, you got to find your fadeaway, yeah. right? Look at your go-to your, your go-to go go move. Yeah, he used we'll to be dunking you. on people, then yeah. he went to the fadeaway, right? Yeah. You got to evolve, man. Like, dude, I, I, I love to find business parallels in different industries. Like, I look at hip hop. Mm -hmm. Dude, look at Jay-Z. Yeah. Look at Drake, yeah. Lil Wayne. Yeah. So many guys have come and gone. But these guys just stay the course. They're consistent. Yeah, Snoop. Right? Snoop. Yeah. They're consistent. Yeah. You follow me? In every industry, dude. Consistency is character, dude. Yeah. 
yeah. you know? And Renee, for being as long as he's been around, you, yeah. me, mm -hmm. you got to pay attention to the trends. Yeah. You understand? So how do we as OGs, I guess we could say? I guess we're now officially called OGs? Yeah, I guess so. Right? Because you're now... a triple OG. <laughs> all right? I'm a single OG. Because <laughs> I remember when I was 20, I'm 20 years old, I'm looking up to the OGs, and OGs to me were 40s and 50-year-olds. Right, they've been around for, right, for a minute, right? Right, right. And I remember telling myself, man, I, I can, I can, ooh, I can, I can get you. Mm -hmm. I can get you. I can, I, I'm going to dunk on you, right? Mm -hmm. Just learn a couple moves. I'm going to outpace you, right? But a lot of these OGs are starting to learn how to grow too, as well. They're starting to learn how to grow, innovate. They're learning how to develop. But if if I'm if I'm an, if I'm an OG, what would I be? What would you be telling the? What are you telling these guys in their in their 20s and 30s, the young in their in their mortgage career, mm -hmm. right? Facing this, facing this wall. Well, OGs move correctly. YGs move quickly, okay? So when we were young, give me the ball, I'm going down the paint and I'm dunking on someone, you understand? OGs yeah. now know where the ball is going uh, and they let the game come to them, uh, you feel me? Okay. Just school them on some game, man. Look at some Hennessy in here or something, man. You know what I'm saying? Some, <laughs> some, 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 some. All right, we, so dude, I think, I think as I talk to the young group, Ignorance is bliss, you understand? So if they're newer in the, in the mortgage industry, for example, mm -hmm. ignorance is bliss. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm in Miami now, right? Yeah. When I came from Chicago to Miami, I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm a mirror. Like, I had no idea who's who, I, yeah. I'm happy, yeah. right? But in Chicago, I'm like, nah, I don't wanna go here, I already know, you know? So ignorance is bliss. So this industry, it's the rite of passage. You are not allowed to make thousands, if not millions of dollars, unless you go through a downturn. This is your rite of passage. You are not allowed, I'm sorry. So you have to go through this. Yeah. So you have to come to grips with that, that yeah. here is the door. I got to go through it. Yeah. Welcome. If you don't want to go through that rite of passage yeah. of struggle yeah. and a down market, you don't deserve to be a successful entrepreneur. So they have to come to grips with that, mm -hmm. right? So that's the messaging I give them because success is given value through struggle, right? So some of the younger people, what I tell them is I say, dude, get excited because by the end of the year, 40, 50% of all loan officers are going to leave the industry. We all know these rates are going to come back down, okay? It's just a matter of time. They're artificially yep. high right now. Yep. Dude, of the 66 million millennials, 50 million of them are about to hit prime household formation age of 33, 34 years old. Okay, Think about I'm, that. I'm laughing at this because okay. when, I was, when I was in my 30s, mm -hmm. millennials were laughing at me as the old guy. <laughs> right? <They're> like, <laughs> oh, God, how's the knees? How's the back? Okay, millennials. How's the knees? Yeah. How's the back? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Bad and gay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Smelling like a prescription Dude. prescription cabinet. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. So, bro, like, it's just, you know, and now what I keep preaching, dude, is like, it's such an amazing time to be an entrepreneur. And, like, my niche is yeah. loan officers, right? Yeah. Dude, of these 50 million millennials, 90% plus get their information online, start their home search online, okay? 84%, I love data, yeah, okay? Yeah, for sure. Data over drama. Yeah, yeah. 84% do, this is a Warren Business School study, 84% do not trust company brands. Really? They trust personal brands. In individuals. Yes. Wow. And yesterday we had a gentleman, Jefferson Fisher, y'all should yeah. check him out, 2.2 million organic IG followers. Tri was, trial attorney. Trial attorney, right. <laughs> right? We were at dinner last night, he was there, he yeah. said, if you were not at your company, yeah. would you still follow them on social? And that, the room just got quiet. And I'm like, I, I wouldn't, yeah. right? Yeah. I wouldn't follow my company if I wasn't there. He goes, exactly. Wow. People follow you no matter where yeah. you go. Yeah. He goes, they follow personal brands. You know, and so I, I, yeah, I tell guys that even in the insurance side of things, just because you got New York Life on your, your you know, Prudential, just because you got a Northwestern Mutual, the sponsor of the NCAA, doesn't mean somebody's gonna naturally trust you. They're gonna trust you, bro. Exactly. You. You are a yeah. walking LLC. Can, can you show the screen real quick? You, I think you put this on your status update. 84% of millennials don't like mm. traditional advertising, nor do they trust it. Who, who's that smart guy? Yeah. Oh my gosh, there you go. Wow. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep, so most, yet most boomer CEOs hire boomer CMOs and do what boomers do in marketing. Yeah. Right? Yep. You know, dude, check this out. They have this big event, security systems, mm -hmm. right? And they say, Whoever can break through this home security system will get like a million dollar check. This is like thing, right? Well, before they bring out that home security, they hire burglars 
as employees, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because they're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the government hires hackers. Sure. Okay, you're, yeah. you're a hacker. Yeah. Try to hack through this, we're going to hire you. Yeah. So the thing is, is these CEOs, I'm looking at them like, why are you hiring? Like, remember the movie Big with Tom Hanks? Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. So he's, he was a kid in a man's body. And he went to the toy shop yeah. and all these executives are trying yeah. to make these toys. And he's like, I don't like it. They hired a kid yeah. to sell toys to kids. Bingo. So these older, old, old is just a mindset. Yeah. The way they're marketing. Exactly, yeah. man. Yeah. They're, they're like sponsoring yeah. like cornhole tournaments and these things. Dude, this is where people are getting, put the money in your LOs, your yeah. advisors. Yeah. Encourage them to build their personal brand. You, know, you could put millions into them. Yeah. That army of yeah. marketing yeah. will make everybody more money. Yeah. Every time I see a big brand investing in a billboard or something like that, I'm like, yeah, keep going, keep going, ahead because yes. you keep the market share open for me. That's right. Never interrupt your competition when they're making mistakes. Correct. <laughs> right. right. Let's take a look at my screen real quick. Uh, there's this movie out there uh, I, I watched a while ago. It's called Catch this. Me If You Can. Remember this one? Oh my God. So my first financial conference, this guy named Frank Abagnale shows up. Because I'm the world's biggest scam artist. What? I, ripped the, I, I wrote all these counterfeit checks. I stole the government. Da, 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 and that's why I'm your speaker today. Because I knew how to scam the government. Oh, my gosh. And the government hired him Boom. to show them how not to get scammed. Boom. Catch me if I can. That's, that's, that's when Leonardo DiCaprio played his, played his deal. So a large part of the wisdom what you're talking about, if I'm coming up in, in the business today, mm. I want to surround myself with OGs to find out what their wisdom is in a fresh in a fresh mind. That's right. Right. That's right. And, and gathering that the, gathering that intel, because here's the thing too as well: a wise OG will know to surround himself with a with a YG. Right. Right. And they, mm -hmm. and, they and they and they rock and they rock together. That's they, right. they blend the, because sometimes it, maybe it's Filipino or Iranian. You respect your elders. Respect your elders, dude. I get it. I get respect your elders, but there's also a business strategy like take what the elders know. And with the with the with the with the YG knows mm -hmm. and come come together and, and, and make that happen. Bro, that's one hundred percent right. Man, that's such gems that you just dropped there, right? Dude, when I was younger, my dad gave me so much confidence. He goes, You're the future, you're the young guy. He goes, What should we do here? Oh, that's what do? Renee said about you last night. It, oh wow. At, at the party. He said the future is Amir. Wow. So I got bro, I, I got a, I, I got receipts. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I got receipts. Okay. I got it recorded. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm very honored, man. You know, I don't, I don't ever, you know. So, dude, I think, like, when I launched this coaching company, I went and did a lot of research, and I said, who can, sm smart people write checks for speed. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to write a check mm -hmm. about who's doing it. Mm -hmm. I learned from these 20 year olds, man, that are killing it in the e-learning space, and not once I'm like entitlement, fear, perfection. I have no entitlement. Yeah. These, these young kids, man, I'm like, what can I learn from you? Yeah. And they're teaching me. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. We got to have that Japanese word, shoujin, rookie mindset yeah, every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, I come yeah. in every day with a beginner's mindset. Yeah. Who can I learn from? Yeah. Because right now, one year in the timeline of civilization is 100 years yeah. with technology. Yeah. Things are moving so quick. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think it's important to have OGs around because mm -hmm. the OGs give the wisdom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The YGs, yeah. they give more of like the speed. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So when you can move quickly, correctly, OGs move correctly, young Gs move quickly, you can bring that together, yeah. game over. 100%. But one thing I will say about the YGs, y'all need to take your protein shakes, man, because some of y'all don't work long, man. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I need I need a nap. I need a brain break. Like, man, get, you gotta on, man. get a dose of some work ethic, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's where I, but I'm saying that to me because that's where I was in my 20s. Even though physically, mm -hmm. uh, I was in the Marine Corps, physically I can have endurance. Mm -hmm. But entrepreneurial endurance is not necessarily physical endurance. It's, it's mental endurance. Emotional, it's emo mental. That's it. And so I, I'm going to take a look at what's going on in the market today. Uh, can we look at my, my screen real quick? Okay, so this is some of the worst news that a loan officer wants to see. Some of the worst news a realtor mm -hmm. wants to see, right? It's cheaper to rent than buy. Great for landlords, great for real estate investors. Uh, another one here. Um, your, uh, U.S. mortgage rates soared the highest in more than 23 years. I don't want to see that shit if I'm a loan officer. Right, right. So what, what, do, you, what do you say to loan? What's the opportunities today? What, what are they not seeing past the headlines? Well, the long-term minded loan officer understands this is a war of attrition right now. Right. And so if they're long term minded, mm -hmm. they will be rewarded. OK, so we all know 
the fastest way to build wealth in this country is through real estate. It's the, the numbers don't lie, right? The American home is the golden goose of the American economy. Yeah. There's 70 plus sub economies that flow into a home. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Electrician, yeah. utility, sure. flooring guy, window guy, all that, right? Yeah. Government, internet, 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 cable. Yeah, oh, do we even say cable anymore? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi, Wi uh, yeah. you know, routers all over the place. Yes. Yeah. Dude, yeah. hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars go through one home. Yeah. It's like a... It's like a, it's a crazy charger to the economy. How, yeah. How many jobs do you create as a homeowner? Thank you. That's it. Thank you. So they, this is just temporary, dude. Yeah. Right? So it's all going to pass. And the media, you know, they, they, they drive a little fear. But the same way, as mm. soon as the Fed brings these rates down, yeah. media will get a hold of it. Yeah. And then you rock and roll, baby. Yeah. You know? Because, I mean, there's two schools of thought I'm running across the mirror. People uh, in the real estate community. One, one is school that is that. Right? It's going to pass. Blah, blah, blah. The other school of thought, man, I haven't closed a mortgage in six months. I ain't closed a, a house or I haven't had a listing. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody's showing up to the listings, right? And I think the, the, the average homeowner today, I'm sorry, the average person that wants to buy the average home today, they need to make $141,000 in income mm -hmm. to, to buy the average home. And then you need a, FA, uh, what's FHA, 3.5%? 3.5% down. 3.5%. So if I'm buying a $400,000 house, 3.5%, you know, you're looking at a $15,000 down payment. Right. And if I'm already living paycheck to paycheck, when am I scraping together 15 grand, right? But that stuff hasn't changed though. I, that, we were dealing with this stuff in 05, 06, 08. So how, dude, how I, I, I wanna implore the government if somehow this gets routed to them, dude, like they, in, in 2008, they came out with um, this $8,000 down payment grant. Obama came out with HARP, right? For help people that are underwater yeah. their mortgage. And he came out with this $8,000 first time home buyer grant, right? The government right now, they need to think, okay, we're gonna do a special program. Yeah. If you make, part of the average median income in your community, mm -hmm. you're gonna get a $15,000 grant. Think about what that would do. Yeah. Think about that. So you can't qualify for it if you make too much, but if you make X amount of dollars, you get 15K. Watch what that would do to, to inventory, right? The second thing they need to do is- Shit, they're already doing that with the damn uh, college education, yeah, the, the, exactly. student, don't, uh, the student debt relief program. That's exactly right, right? And so now think about it like, that they mortgage interest is not as tax deductible anymore. So that's like you get people in homes. It's up to it's, it's we used to be up to a million dollars now, so down to seven fifty. Yeah, right and now. it's just going down, right? So, dude. Then, secondly, think about this. This is crazy. This idea I'm about to give you, and I have loan officers in Canada. Okay, they have portable mortgages in Canada. So if I have a three percent rate on my home, mm -hmm. I can take my three percent rate on my mortgage yeah. and transfer it to my new home. Damn. They just need to start thinking creatively and yeah. do that because, yeah. dude. Almost, I think the stat is almost like 70% of all home mortgages right now are under a 4% interest rate. Wow. So unless these rates come back down to fives, yeah. right, people are not going to give it up. So inventory is locked up. Mm -hmm. They need to allow assumability. I want to buy your home, Matt. Mm -hmm. You have a 2.5%. Yeah. I want to take over your 2.5%. Allow me to do that, right? FHA allows that. The VA allows that. Yeah. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, conventional loans, yeah. one out of every two home loans is conventional. They need to allow for that. Yeah. Or allow that mortgage to be portable. Yeah. Or all you people that are making 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars that are getting pinched in the middle class, mm -hmm. we're gonna take care of you guys. Yeah. Here's a fifteen thousand dollar down payment grant. Yeah. You don't have to pay it back as long as you live in the home for three years. That's it. That's it. And you have to be a first time home buyer, it means you cannot have bought a home maybe in the last twenty four months to qualify. Yeah. Right? Dude, think about what that would do. You, mm -hmm. That's why these business leaders, there's no billionaire economist. Don't ever forget that. That's right. right. They, they, they got a job. They need, they <laughs> They're need, working for themselves. They need entrepreneurs <laughs> to come in and say, this is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be theory. Yeah. You know, too much academics yeah. is not good. Yeah. Talk to them, like, just talk to entrepreneurs like us how to help the housing economy right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But that, that's that about rents. Dude, let me tell you something. If mortgage rates go up, right? Where are all these people going to go? Back to renting, mm -hmm. right? What yeah. the landlord is going to do? They're going to increase the rent. Right. right. It's just what's going to, that's a simple theory of it. Sure. I feel bad for a lot of people, man. I 100% feel bad for a, a lot of people. Because the way to build wealth, if I'm paying monthly for something, I want to building equity. You're not building equity by renting an apartment. You have a temporary place to live. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we, uh, I was at a retirement community uh, on Monday. And a bunch of 80, 90-year-olds were in the 70, 80, 90 year olds They were all worried about one thing. Mm. They're all worried about running out of money. Oh, my God. Because they're living longer. They didn't expect to live to 80 years old. They didn't expect to live to 90. I talked to a guy named, a guy named Leon. He's, he's, like, he's 92 years old. They, in, inside that retirement community, they have his picture when he was in the Army. 
at 22. So he's looking at his picture at 22. He's 92. Oh, my God. 70 years later. 70 years later. Right? So when, when Social Security was created in 1935, you're supposed to die at 65. Right. Think about what the life expectancy was in 1935. Yeah. For you to be in your 60s, you're old, bro. Right. Today, 60s, you just start life. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you just, yeah. You just, you just get rolling, That's man. That's dupe. He's going to go to 100, 110, 120 maybe. You're Filipino, man. You got people live to 130, man. You know, <laughs> Filipinos don't crack, man. <laughs> but by, speaking of uh, speaking of Iranians, uh, I, I want to sh shift because, you know, obviously I'm, I've 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 worked with Patrick Davis, who's Iranian mm -hmm. from Tehran. That's so, where I was born. That's where no I was kidding. born. Yeah. So crazy. Yep. Shout out PBD. Sit, you know, baby. Yeah. let's go, baby. So yeah, you. I didn't realize I was hanging around so many Iranians growing up. I didn't mm -hmm. realize I was hanging around so many Palestinians growing up. Mm -hmm. For what's going on in the world today, a lot of a lot of civil unrest. You know, we've been through a lot of crap. What aren't people understanding about what's going on in America today? About the crisis that's in Israel, the crisis in Hamas, the crisis in, in Pal Pal uh, Palestine. What is going on? It's a very. Um, You're from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from Iran. You know, and that whole Middle East. It's uh it's a long, complicated conversation, yeah, right? Yeah. All I can say is that um, the the human aspect of it is yeah. tragic. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Human beings, man, we're a uh, complicated species. We are. You know, like yeah. I always joke around. If aliens are flying by the Earth, they're locking their doors. In the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah, oh. we're going to Uranus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what they're thinking. Like, what are these people doing? You know, but. I mean, to, to, to just to put some light on the situation, right? But uh, in all seriousness, man, um, you know, I've studied a lot of it, okay? And coming from an immigrant household, yeah. I have the perspective from a different mm -hmm. viewpoint and sure. not so much uh, indoctrinated yeah. from the Western media, yeah. right? Which is important. I'm, I'm yeah. privileged to have had that yeah. from Middle Eastern parents. I have yeah. family in Iran, so I get both sides of what's really going on. You know, and so what I've learned from it is the media does um, spin things, unfortunately, yeah, for their for own narrative, sure, 100%. right? percent. And so with that being said, um, everyone's looking for peace, right? I just don't think it'll ever happen there. Yeah. It's um, interesting. It's going back to the bi biblical days, it's uh, thousands, centuries. I mean, you, yeah. you, you go back to Abraham and Sarah and uh, Hagar. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Whole, oh man. Know, yeah. Genesis. <laughs> what I'm gonna say might uh, might you know bother some people, which which is it's cool, you know, but. Love, man, like, love conquers everything. 100%. Yeah. I, I just love, like, I love to see, like, you know, I saw the protesters in Chicago, the Palestinians, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and my wife is, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, she's, you know, Arab. And so I would just, I would love to see, like, the young people come together yeah. on both sides yeah. in different cities yeah. and just walk together. Yeah. You know? Like, Shrezer. Israelis and Palestinians, like, in the same street. Why, why, why would you think that would be offensive, bro? I, I don't know, man. I know it's such a touchy subject, yeah. man, and, yeah. it, you know, it, it'll yeah. maybe rile some people up, but... That would be that would just bring so much happiness yeah. to the world, man. That they're walking hand in hand together. I'm for sure know? on the side of human life. Yeah, I'm man. For sure on the side of human life. I'm, you know, it's 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 to try. I mean, us being parents. I mean, oh you know. Oh my gosh, man. You know, when I see when I see you know babies like that, and you know we got our own kids, and you know I'm on the side of human life, and and even Jesus said to pray not just for yourself, but He said to even do the deeper thing, which is to pray for your enemies. That God softens their heart, and uh, that's the hardest thing to do. Even Jesus said, how, how, how good is it just to pray for yourself and people you love? No, the hard thing to do is to pray for your enemies. Wow. That's right. Dude, when, if, I always say if Jesus came, you know, I was on earth right now, yeah. right? Like, yeah. he, he wouldn't be, he'd be living in the hood, man. <laughs> exactly. He, he'd be at the bars, may not be drinking, he, but he'd be at the bars. He, he'd, be, he'd be at places you wouldn't imagine because yeah. he talks about it. You know, he was yeah. with, you know, the, 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 the woman at the well yeah. that was a prostitute. Yeah. You know, like people don't understand what, who Jesus was hanging out with. Yeah. He was hanging out with the broken people. He was not hanging out with the people that were were good. Yeah. With the he was hanging out with the tax collectors. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you got Matthew. Yes. Yeah. Him <laughs> the, the tree. Like yeah. if he was here right now, he would be with people you wouldn't imagine. Yeah. You know. That's why he's the greatest leader of all time. I mean, man. if you look if you look at the lineage of Jesus, one of the greatest leaders of all time. Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. From 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 uh, Abraham all the way to Jesus, there's 41, 42 generations. Mm -hmm. A bunch of messed up people in between, man. So he comes from a messed up. I mean, you talk about the, David. Yeah, you know Solomon. You know, oh. you talk about some. You talk about some really shady characters that came through, and then the lineage was, was Jesus. But you know, when we're looking at this, then people ask me, "Is faith maybe not about Jesus?" No, faith is about faith. 
You know, when, when you make it about yourself, it's, it's, it's about me, me, me. When it's about faith, it's about a higher power. It's Surrendering yeah. to someone, something else. A yes. higher power. I surrender. I, have, right. I cannot see, yeah. but I have so much faith, right, that I, I listen. It, it's yeah. everything, yeah. right? Like faith is, dude, it's one of the most, and sales. Yeah. I always say you have to have a strong relationship with fear and faith. Those two F's. percent yeah. yeah. So you work and work and work yeah. and work and you're having a business. What's happening, yeah. right? You, yeah. you have some fear. Yeah. This is good fear. I need a little good fear. Yeah. I need a little healthy paranoia yeah. to keep me on my toes, yeah. right? Yeah. But the faith is yeah. on the other side. Yeah. I can't see through the fog. Sure. But you got to, man. I mean, look who's in the studio today, man. I mean, you got, you introduced me to Renee. He's Cuban. You're Iranian. Mm -hmm. I'm Filipino. Dude. This is America. Let's go. And through that, because, and we all love our families. We all love our our potential future and what we can create. We love our, our work and, and being able to earn it. You know, the religion controls and murders. I mean, that's not a popular topic, but that's what I, I, I believe. But faith builds. Faith heals. Faith, faith goes past that and goes, goes above that. And so, you know, we're, we're looking at America today and, and the healing of America. You know, uh, you look at candidates like, uh, you know, Vivek, Vivek Ramanswamy on, on, on the Republican side and people that... Uh, uh, have you ever thought about getting involved in some form of, of influence? Because you obviously are influencing an industry. Have you ever thought about influencing maybe from a political standpoint? Imagine an Iranian getting up there. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Matt, I, um, I have faith in God, and I, I, uh, I listen when God talks. You know? And so if that's where he wants me to go, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, 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 I'll Really? Yeah. No yeah. kidding. Yeah, God, you're open I, to it. I, I well, okay. I was not born here, so I can't run for president. Yeah. You know, but um, I have thought about um, our hometown, Chicago, yeah. and I'm like, man, what if I run for mayor? You know, like, yeah. what would that look like? But I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm exactly where I need to be, where God wants me to be, and I'm gonna do what I need to do. But for politics, we, we'll see where things go, man. Let's talk about our former hometown real quick. Okay, yeah. We both grew up there. We both love that city. About diehard Chicago Bulls fans, yes. Chicago Bears fans, mm -hmm. yeah, Cubs fans, uh, or, or South. Yeah, Cubs, 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 Cubs. <laughs> Cubs, my, dad, Cubs. Okay. my dad had a business in the North Side, you know. So, hey, baseball divides the city, but football unites. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Baseball unites. What has happened to our great city, man? Because you know, Mo was just asking us here. You know, what, from people that are from Chicago, there's this like, that's a city we love, but we're just so saddened by what's happened. I had three of my guys sadly murdered in the streets of Chicago, with carjacked for the cars, three different incidences. So safety is a ma massive concern for my wife and I. that's why we moved out of Chicago. How they treated people in Chicago, Chicago during the pandemic and the lockdowns. They didn't appreciate the way they did it. So in your opinion, what's going on with our great beloved yeah. city of Chicago? Oh, yeah, it's a great city. I think, dude, I've been thinking about it a lot, right? It's again, another complicated subject. Because we're no longer there. I'm we're in Dallas, you know Miami. I'm in Miami, yeah. So I, it I, lost yeah. two of his sons. Yes, a lot of, a lot, a lot of people have left, yeah. right? But. I do believe in the city, right? I think um, when 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 areas underserved areas mm -hmm. are not invested in, mm -hmm. after a while you can only do so much, man. Mm -hmm. We created that, like so. When I say that, like the South Side and West Side of Chicago, systemically were carved out because of racism. How the Dan Ryan Expressman Expressway was made, like you know, all the redlining that happened in those areas. You can only do that so the, the time will always bring out. The saying on the other side of the track. Exactly. Comes from that. Comes yeah. from that. And so, yeah. dude, when you don't invest in these communities, mm -hmm. you can't get angry at the results, man. And to see, I mean, they try to put, what, a Whole Foods in, in Inglewood? Mm -hmm. Now Whole Foods is out? You know, you're trying to put businesses. I mean, the way you, you, you help a business by investing in business, by putting businesses there, putting entrepreneurs there, but the entrepreneurs aren't either feeling that they're protected or let alone profitable, they're gone. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're talking about um, broken window. Can we take a look at my uh, screen yeah. here real quick? Broken window theory. Uh, this is a broken window theory you brought up earlier. The broken window theory states that the visible signs of crime, antisocial behavior, and civil disorder create an urban environment that encourages further, crime. further crime and disorder, including yeah. serious crimes. That's right. Is that what you think is going on in uh, I, in, I in think Chicago? absolutely. Listen, man. Like, if you if you if you are in, in a room mm -hmm. that's really well taken care of, mm -hmm. you're just naturally gonna adapt and yeah. wanna continue to take good care of it, right? Yeah. But if you're in a room where there's garbage everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. Most people are gonna think, well, it's, it's acceptable, I'll just gonna throw my garbage yeah. out, right? So this broken windows theory is like in neighborhoods, yeah. you know, these young people are seeing dilapidation and everything, mm -hmm. it's gonna go into their psyche yeah. and they're just gonna feel like, you know, I, it's, it's acceptable. Yeah. 
You understand? And here's why I feel <clears throat> that my home ownership is so important. Yes. Because we don't care. We don't take care of things that we rent. Nobody washes a rental car. Zero. Nobody. But we will take care of something that we own. Exactly. So you know, before I let you go, bro, I know you know, appreciate you investing a little bit of time here. Appreciate you. Man. What's your message to the world right now? It's 2023. We're keeping receipts. We're gonna go back to this video in the next two, three, four years. You know yeah. how we go. Yeah. Just like we did that picture from 2010. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be 62. You're gonna be 82. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's the message to the world? What's the message to your family? What's the message to loan officers at large? Oh man, what's the message? Well, I think um, there's never been a better time for people to invest in themselves. So go explore, um, go experiment with different careers, industries, but this is the time where you have a power, where you don't need a traditional college degree to guarantee any type of your income or yeah. wealth. Yeah. You know, this is the time. Mm -hmm. You have great accessibility to future-proof yourself. Mm -hmm. So go out there and no one is coming to save you. Yeah. You got to just get online with the access of information that you have yeah. and be a person of value, yeah. right? And you can make a lot of money and, and you know, provide for your family. And so if I had to encapsulate that as future-proof yourself, invest in yourself, there's never been a better time to the power of business media, AKA social media, to learn niche crafts, yeah. right? Yeah. And now. And, and a lot of that investing in yourself is a relationship. Look, look at our, our friendship between Amir and That's I. right. Right. We, I got together because I'm doing my insurance seminars in his mortgage office. So there's a natural asset liabilities, income expenses relationship between our industries. And, and when you're looking at that relationship capital uh, over long term, I think that's a, a natural way for people to say, well, find out the parallel businesses that you can associate with that, that regards of up market or down market, you're still generating revenue. You're still building your brand. You're still, you're still co-creating. Dude. Man, I'm so happy you brought that up, right? Like, dude, I'm, a, I'm not supposed to be here, man. That's my whole tagline. Like, literally, I'm not supposed to be here. Like, the way I was, my upbringing was, yeah. like, I, dude, I, so many people have opened doors for me, man. Yeah. Like, people open doors for you behind closed doors. Be a good person. Be kind, right? Like, yeah. meet a lot of people and mm -hmm. stay connected to them, yeah. right? And yeah. you just never know where those opportunities will open. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. That is, your EQ is way greater than your IQ. Like, your emotional intelligence with people, how yeah. you move with people, yeah. the energy you bring, how you, like, pour into people, how you add value to people, how you stay connected to people, you know? Yeah. Dude, that, that, that's, that compounds. Sure. People will open doors for you, yeah. man, yeah. if they like you. Yep. So yep. you can't teach, you can't get down on a spreadsheet, man, yeah. you know? Look where you are, dude. Like, I see you, like, bro, we're standing in front of this office, whatever, 15 years ago. You're in Dallas, like we're on this podcast. You're Patrick Bet Davis, right hand guy, like that guy's story. You never know what's gonna happen in three, four years. What door he's gonna open for you, and where you're gonna go. Like, yeah. what happened, like, bro? We cannot do nothing without people, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's it. So, be yeah. a good person. Yep. So. You know, back to the whole brand thing. People do a business with a person, not necessarily the company. The so. brand be seen before you're known, liked, and trusted through your online brand. Yeah. And then when you're known, be liked. Yeah. And follow through. And follow through. Yeah. And yeah. you're going to kill it. Yeah. You know? Sometimes the biggest disappointment is, yeah, oh, you're not the person I thought you were online. <laughs> yeah. For real? It's too, too bad. It's like, you know, yeah. I'm sorry to disappoint you. That's why you got to be authentic. You got to be real. That's exactly know? right. So that being said, man, I appreciate your time here. I know you got a lot of mastermind to go today, uh, but we're going to put all the links to follow Amir. If you're in a mortgage business, make sure you enlist in this coaching program because when I've invested in coaching, when I've invested in mentors, that meant the world to me because it let me know that I wasn't alone and you're not alone in this market and you can be a leader, not a leaner in this marketplace. So that being said, Amir, I uh, appreciate you stopping by the studio. If you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe, put your comments down below. You agree with us, you don't agree with us. What's some of the questions you have? Maybe we'll bring up in a future segment. That being said, I have Amir Syed. Let's go. I'm your money smart guy. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart. Boom. Peace out. Bye-bye.